Chapter 1 This was a special September evening for Jessica Ferris. Early in the day, the sorority rushed her. That past summer of 1967 accepted her as a pledge. As a student of college, she was a couple years older than her fellow students. She hadn't been able to enroll right out of school, high school due to her father's near fatal heart attack. She had to pitch in financially to the family by getting a job. She felt odd sitting next to Tony Carson, an officer cassette at a state run victory military academy. He was 21, the same age as her. They met almost four years ago when he, she was a cheerleader at nearby Perry Villa High School. Tony was a star quarterback at the academy's football team. As the movie flashed on the driving theatre screen, Jessica's mind drifted into the past. She remembered her first date and how he given her the attention and affection. She was missing a home from her parents, an overbearing father, who did nothing but constantly scold her. She recalled the night a year later when Tony's second touchdown won the state football championship. Overjoyed by the wind, cited by close dancing at school, picture dance, she gave him her innocence in the back seat of his Chevy. She was in a nervous wreck for two weeks, worried he might be, she might be pregnant. In their haste, Tony's cleanliness broke his condom. For those two weeks, her thoughts were that were of her cousin Rondo who committed suicide, or hearing her mother and Jessica's, her mother and Jessica's mother, Mrs. Ruth Ferris, discussing in a tradition we see. I'd rather see my daughter dead and see her have an illegitimate talk child. When his mother stated, think, thinking a daughter would never get herself into a situation like this, never realised the weight of her words, a wish came to be when she arranged her daughter's funeral four days later. But when, when she had to arrange her daughter's funeral four days later, they were turning into the family, and only getting an off-campus pass every other weekend was putting a strain on her relationship. The sound of Tony's voice brought her back to reality. You're ten- years quiet tonight, Jesse. She turned the gaze in her dark, blown eyes. The car seat squeaked as Jesse moved close to him. We've been apart over two weeks. Let's go somewhere where we can be alone, she suggested. Tony eagerly complied and drove quickly to a nearby lake. As the Chevy rolled her stop with the lights off, the inky light leak water melted the dark sky. Only the distant lights gleamed in the empty darkness as they reflected on the vast blackness. Being a warm September night, they decided to leave the car. He grabbed a blanket and she clutched the last of wine. He'd been drinking a movie. The darkness had made a way for some bright light brush and over a few large rocks reaching the light's edge. A light southeast course worked small waves to lap up on the sandy shore where they spread out their blanket. As they lay in the darkness, slipping a last of the wine, they looked up to the star-filled sky, watching for shooting stars. Seeing one, they made their wishes for their future together. Are you okay? Tony asked as he gently squeezed her leg. His warm hand on her soft skin aroused her passions. He felt his fault. Her thoughts quickly sw- switched from the murky darkness surrounding him to what he was doing. I love you, she murmured with his hand round the warmth between her silky pants. That he touched a passionate kiss, released a storm within her. Take me, Tony, she whispered. Hurry, Tony, she begged. He thrust her arm upward as he pressed the bulge of his pants to a wet softness. He quickly slipped on protection. I need you, she pleaded. And got into the home. He met her rocking hips and as far as shallow fusion as fuss and left her out of great groan. No, no, she gasped. And quickly he started it ended even faster. He sets disappointment. Spent Tony looked rolled into the blanket next to her. Later that night, still aroused yet unfulfilled, Jesse slept restlessly, and disappointedly body twisted and turned in her sleep. In her dream she reached out for him, only to find a pillow. Pulling it near, she braced it. But even in her dream, he needed not, her need was not met. She was left unsatisfied.